When you think of a modern smartphone, you think of something that's thin and light, can take selfies, play games, edit photos, download apps, etc. But did you know that Samsung had a feature phone that could do all of this over a decade ago? This is the SGH Z370 and today I'll be showing you all of its features that I thought were pretty advanced at the time. This phone is a powerful collection of the world's slimmest feature phones that Samsung has produced. This phone is 8.4mm tall, however there is a 6.9mm version that looks almost identical design-wise and a record-breaking 5.9mm version, which is thinner than most smartphones on the market. So let's talk about the design. The phone feels really nice in the hand. It's difficult to explain, but I like holding it. Maybe it's because of its size, or maybe it's because of its thinness. The D-pad is placed right away from lands. All the buttons are extremely slim, which makes them a little difficult to press, but I've certainly used worse keypads. They also make a little click sound when you press them. The phone design-wise looks good too, and honestly, I think the design still stands up. The design is of course not everything, so let's actually get to showing off all the cool features this phone has. I quickly want to say that I'm not saying this phone is the first to have these features or that it does them the best. This is just what I have on hand and what I grew up with. The one feature that stood out to me the most when I used this phone for the first time in years is that it has a front-facing camera. That's pretty damn futuristic. I didn't even know phones had front-facing cameras before smartphones came about. Of course, the main reason this camera was added was for video calling. However, this doesn't mean that you can't use it for selfies. In fact, Samsung added filters to the camera app. Yes, filters. You want to cover up your face with cat glasses or a scuba mask? Boom! How cool is that? Moving on to other camera features. There is also a multi-shot mode, where the phone can take multiple pictures per second. There is also a mosaic mode, where you can take multiple shots and combine them into a frame. This once again is pretty damn cool. Here are some of my test shots. The front facing camera does of course lack detail and is also a little noisy, but it's again not the worst thing ever, it's just not great. While we are talking about photos, let me show you the image editor. Within you can apply effects like black and white, sepia, etc etc. However, you can also add images on top of one another, add text, and add frames and filters, like the ones I've talked about previously. Again, I would say that's pretty advanced. The one disadvantage when doing this is that the resolution goes down to 220 by 176 when doing this, as well as when taking mosaic shots and when taking frame and filter shots. This is probably because the phone can handle manipulating such big images, which is understandable. Let's move on to something else. This phone has a multitasking button, which is pretty neat. When you press that button, you can switch to the dialer, messages, internet browser, or to close it all. I really do like the fact that this phone makes different noises depending on the buttons you press and the menu you're in. Have a listen. Since we are talking about sounds, let's talk about the phone's music playback capabilities. This phone can play MP3s as well as MIDI's and SMAF. Let me give you an example of all three being played. A phone playing MP3s in 2006 wasn't exactly uncommon. However, I believe this is the first phone that we owned that could do this, and also I wasn't expecting it to work with modern MP3s. Just like a modern smartphone, this phone has no headphone jack. Instead, you have to rely on the crappy headset that came in the box, or try to find a headphone jack adapter. This phone is also able to play 3D games. It comes with two out of the box, Power Inline X and The Last Stage. They don't run at a great frame rate, but the fact that this phone can play 3D games at all was just mind-blowing for me. You unfortunately can't install your own games onto this phone. The only way to do so is through the store, and that has very likely gone down by now. I can't check if it has, as this phone is sim locked and the card is no longer active. There was of course no Wi-Fi on board, as that was reserved for smartphones and more premium phones. Alright, so let's wrap this video up. The last few features I want to mention are the fact that this phone has an SD card slot, a pretty competent document viewer for PDFs and Microsoft documents, Bluetooth printing, Bluetooth headset support, 3G support, and a decent vibrator. So what do you guys think of this phone? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to be taking an indefinite break from Pocket Pixel, however I will be back.